AITA for refusing to visit and have my wife attend my daughter's baby shower? Originally posted by UDDADFL Guy15 in R. Am I the Asshole on December 15, 22. Updated February 22, 23. Original post. AITA for refusing to visit and have my wife attend my daughter's baby shower? I. M. 71. And wife. Karen. F. 78. Leave for Florida in late October and live in CT for the summer. Kara. My daughter. And. Her husband. Sean live in M.A. Kara is pregnant with their first in March. In Sept. My stepson gifted new floors to Kara and Sean for their kitchen. I offered to help with install. Their home is over 100 years old. I am not a contractor or a carpenter but I am good at home repairs. I was supposed to only install the floors but during demo. I encouraged them to demo some cabinets so the flooring laid down better. I said I would help with prep on weekends and come back from Florida in November to assemble new cabinets and install. They agreed. They are new homeowners and not handy but were eager to work. The walls ended up being covered in rotting horsehair plaster which was a surprise. When the weekend ended, there was no stove hookup. Floors were 10% installed and it was a bit of a mess. I left it to them to plaster the walls that week and I'd come next weekend. By Tuesday Kara and Sean called in a panic, saying the plaster was a disaster and that Kara was afraid of the stress on her pregnancy. I told them to wait. Kara told me she felt mislead and that the project spiraled out of control and asked me to take ownership, not financial, for my hand in their issues. I told them they made their choice to demo and it's not my house. They paid me for my help and hired contractor. They said I'm not able to commit to a project of this size. I work FT and help my stepson with his flip and didn't believe I would come back to help after leaving for Florida and Kara is uncomfortable with working during pregnancy, all to which I disagreed. I was hurt they fired me and still am. It's been weird since. I have not reached out to ask about the kitchen or the baby, though they provided scattered updates on the baby and Karen asked about the baby a few times. Recently Kara reached out saying this has been terrible they had to pull permits from the town. They haven't had a stove or sink in months. Kara said she feels I don't care about her health and our grandchild as I have not checked in. That I didn't take ownership. I laughed and told her I would have had it all done by now. She sent a text telling Karen and I not to speak to her and that she is upset. Karen RSV ped no to Kara's shower in January and cancelled our trip without telling them. Sean reached out asking us to reconsider saying they will only become parents once and that Kara was 6.5 months pregnant and didn't mean what she said he offered to pay for our tickets to come. Karen and I have been firm on our stance however. We told them to let us know well in advance and we can visit in March before or after the baby. Kara is devastated but Karen and I were only trying to accommodate her wishes. I think I may be the asshole for cancelling my trip knowing Kara is stressed and pregnant. So am I the asshole? Judgment. Asshole. Update two months later. Unsure if anyone remembers this post. But I have an update. As some have predicted. This was actually Kara posting. I apologize. I made the post from my father's perspective hoping to better understand his perspective. Thank you to everyone for your feedback it was cathartic to read. It helped me realize I had the right to feel the way I did and that going low contact may be the best option moving forward. Since I posted, my father and stepmother doubled down on their position and refused to make peace with my husband. And I. Sean made several attempts to make peace. I did not because my cortisol levels were high from the stress. I was dealing with additional complications. They refused to attend my shower. But luckily other people showed up and made us feel so loved. 
The day of the shower my father reached out to Sean because we didn't acknowledge the gift they mailed to us. It was sent without tag I had assumed it was from someone else who purchased off our registry. I think he perceived this as a slight. However we tried not to let the negativity affect our day. Sean and I have been choosing to focus on the baby I am almost 38 weeks. Oh. And the kitchen is completely done we are thrilled at the results. Though still feeling the stress of the financial impact. As a last ditch effort to see if my father cares about being a part of the birth of his grandson. Sean texted a picture of my son from a 3D impromptu ultrasound we had to get today I think the photo made it all feel so real for Sean and he was really hoping to mend fences. My father ignored the text he has not checked in on me or the baby since October. While painful, it is clear to us he intends to hold on to this grudge and doesn't want to be involved in our lives. Or our son. I wish I could say I'm at peace with this but I'm really not. I will do the best to move forward. Focus on the baby and when I'm feeling down I reread some of the comments from my earlier post to remind me that going low, no contact is the best choice for us. Thank you again, everyone. Reminder. Do not comment on the original posts or contact the original poster. I am not the original poster. This is a repost. From the first post. I thought the whole take ownership thing and then Kara sending a text saying stay away. But then being mad when her parents did was strange. The fact it was Kara posting makes it even stranger. I don't believe a single word of this. This was a weird one. I'm not sure why Kara felt comfortable relying on a 71-year-old who isn't a contractor to do a major renovation like replacing the floors and cabinets. I've done both of those things and while it's not necessarily hard, it is time-consuming and usually takes way longer than you think. She made the post as her dad. Most likely a lie and over-dramatized. And then the update on her private Reddit. I can't believe posts like these when they aren't made by the person to get info on how they really think. Could making AITA posts falsely written from someone else's perspective not be a thing? That would be great. I'd like to hear her dad's actual side of the story. More to this story for sure. Oh, I'm sure this was an honest version of events posted by someone that employed deception in the first place. Op is an ungrateful person who demanded too much from her 71-year-old dad who isn't even in the area to help out never mind not being up to the task of doing the job itself. Then trying to make a post in her father's perspective to understand it more. No you wanted validation for yourself. You were helping with renovations. The old house walls had serious issues and needed additional repairs. Not dad's fault. Daughter overreacts. Sends a message to her parents to not contact them. So the parents do not contact them. Now daughter is confused that dad and mom have not contacted them. And upset they did not come to the baby shower. She calls it that the parents are holding a grudge. Really? Reminder. She contacted parents and told them not to contact them. Pretending to be their dad? Relying on a 71-year-old to do something when it was never their professional job. Op is unhinged. I feed for the dad and those kids. And she is trying to be the victim? Ugh. This gives me a weird feeling. Like, yeah, every one of these updates is only one person's side of the story. But pretending to be the other party is just unpleasant to me. Right at the beginning, it says that the father has a full-time job and could only help on weekends. They called him on Tuesday and he told, asked, them to wait and they canned him. Never mind that she specifically told the stepmother that she didn't want to speak to them. 
resulting in them cancelling their trip to the baby shower, presumably out of respect for her no-contact rule, and giving them two options to visit when Kara is ready to have them. Isn't that what we always recommend? Kara asked for space, so you give it to her and let her know that you're just waiting for the signal to reopen. Communication. Maybe Kara is sore because she knows that if he had stuck to his schedule, it would have been done now. Like he said, I also love how the husband apologized that Kara's pregnancy made her say things she didn't mean. Lol. But Kara herself didn't bother apologizing. Hmm. Pretending to be someone else shows that Kara is 100% comfortable not telling the truth. It makes the whole story lack credibility. Don't agree with asshole decision for this one but whatever. She is basically mad BC there was unexpected rotting plaster and wants to blame it on the 71 year. Old man who is not a contractor that she permitted to install floors. I'm conflicted. One because the first post is a super unreliable account of events as it is admittedly by UPA. Complete lie. But also UP doesn't seem knowledgeable about renovations. They really should not have bought a 100-year-old house if they weren't expecting some issues. When you start to tear stuff down you find things. It was actually a good thing they tore stuff down at the dad's recommendation and found rotting. Walls. Super inconvenient while you are pregnant. But it probably saved a headache down the line. Who knows mold could have been growing or it could have lead to more damage. But the rot isn't the dad's fault. I completely understand the stress as I went through a complete house renovation while pregnant and I am still going through the same renovation while pregnant with a second and a toddler. But I am also aware that's how things are when you sign up for a DIY renovation. That isn't on the dad. However, it is super petty for the dad to cut them off because of this. I suspect the issues go far deeper than some floors and walls on both sides. It would be interesting to hear the dad's actual point of view. I don't get it. He told them his schedule. Obviously he couldn't commit to more without jeopardizing his job. And then she tells them not to contact her and she will reach out when she's ready. Then gets all upset when they RSVP no to her baby shower. Husband contacts them and asks them to come. They stand firm on respecting her wishes. And they're the assholes? Yeah. No. That's not how that works. My husband has a friend like this who really only ever contacts him when he wants something. Nice enough guy when we hang out with him, I suppose. But that's still the only time he calls. Reno my kitchen, bring me a gift and play happy family even though I won't reach out to you myself and you're just doing what I asked of you by refusing. I don't buy it. Oop, you're the asshole. IDGI. She asked for space and has made no attempts to reach out personally. So they're giving her space. And they're wrong for that? I know we Seuss in the bus but come on. Make it make sense at least. I hate posts that pretend to be from the other person's side. No matter how unbiased you think you're being. You can't actually know what's going on in someone else's head. I'm sure this was very stressful for Oop and the dad was a dick. But with the stunt, she doesn't exactly scream reliable narrator. Yeah I don't believe her story at all. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.